this morning we're going to begin looking at Ephesians chapter 2 and just some some rich truths in that chapter but as I was meditating on the passage that we're looking at this morning Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 um, boy I was just reminded that uh, boy God's grace is just cannot be exhausted. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, oh but now Like a flood, 
His mercy brings unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace. As I was singing that, I was just reminded that it was the hearing of that song that began my journey to the day that I would come to know Christ personally. It was the weekend Sandy and I got married, which was actually Memorial Day weekend, which is coming up. Our 38th anniversary will be May the 29th. And um, I put up with a lot of stuff for 38 years. I know. Uh, just, just kidding. Um, but we had gotten married. We'd driven, driven to Reno. She asked me to marry her on Thursday. We drove to Reno on Sunday and got married. And we went back to San Francisco and we were at a San Francisco Giants game and we missed the baseball game, but we got there in time for the Charlie Daniels concert. And um, at the close of his concert, uh, Charlie Daniels did that song, Amazing Grace. Uh, now, Charlie Daniels at the time, I don't think knew Christ. He later came to Christ and knew him personally. But it was the singing of that song and that San Francisco Candlestick Park that God began to prick my heart. And all I can remember doing is just coming to tears and crying when I heard that song because I knew the life that I was living uh, was not the life that I had been raised to live. Grew up in a Christian home. And um, boy, I just knew something wasn't right. But God used that song. And, and Paul's talking about this salvation, this amazing grace and salvation this morning. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, he, he begins by reminding us, and you were dead in your trespasses and sin in which you once walked. We all were dead, separated from God, dead, spiritually dead, in our trespasses and sin, and we all once walked in those. And we followed the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. We were following after. It was almost in a sense that, that we were just being carried along by the course of this world because there was no conscience. The Spirit of God was not in us. We had no uh, recollection that we were following along in the course of the world. Maybe you're like me and you, you've gotten, um, gotten dulled to any sense of, of right of righteousness, of living even a moral life, which, by the way, a moral life cannot save us. Uh, but we were all carried along, following the course of this world. And, you know, we talk about the world. The Bible talks a lot about the world and the world system. And if you've come to know Christ when you're born again, it's, it's almost immediate because the Spirit of God, as Paul has already said, indwells the hearts of the believer. And when the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, resides in us, immediately there's a sense that, that there is another sphere and we recognize what that course of the world is, that system of the world. The one that does not have the spirit, the one who's not been born again, has no idea. They're just trying to maybe live a moral life. They're just trying to, to do good and and maybe at the end of at the end of it all, if there, if I've done enough good, then it's going to outweigh the bad. And folks, that's just not the way it is. But we follow along the course of this world. John writes in his first letter about the world. He says, "For all that is in the world, here's what the world system is: the desires of the flesh, gratifying those things that are that are our passions in the flesh, just to try to get satisfaction and gratify those." And the desires of the eyes, w wanting all that, that we see for our self-indulgent and, and fulfillment, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from this world. And so that's what the world system is. And we were following along in that, Paul says. Verse 3, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and our mind, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. By our very nature, our sin nature being separated from God, we were children of wrath. 
God's wrath, which was going to come, which is going to come. We were all children of wrath, separated from the wrath that would be poured out on all humanity, on all sin. Thank God we've been saved and we've been spared from that wrath. Um, Jesus has taken that for us on the cross. But God, being rich in mercy, I love that phrase, God being rich in mercy, mercy is us not getting what we deserve. God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, Christ made us alive with him. By taking our sins on him, by taking the wrath of God, the judgment of God in him. And when we placed our faith in Christ, it's as if that very moment that Christ was on the cross, we were there with him. And he has taken the wrath of God on our behalf. God's anger, God's, God's vengeance on sin was poured out on his own son. And then verse 6, And he raised, him, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You remember yesterday we looked in chapter 1 where it says that Christ was raised and the Father seated him in the heavenly places. We're here Paul tells us now that where Christ is seated in the heavenly places, we too are seated there with him. Positionally, we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. We don't realize it yet because our redemption, our full redemption has not taken place yet. Um, but we are redeemed and we're being redeemed. And one day we will literally be there with him in the heavenlies, worshiping him around his throne. So that in the coming age, verse 7, he might show his immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. There in that coming age is in that time when we will fully realize it. We will see the glorious riches of God's grace. For, verse 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's by God's grace we have been saved, through our faith in him, trusting him. And you know, the Bible teaches that if God had not enabled us, opened our eyes and opened our hearts and given us the faith to believe, we still couldn't even believe. That's how sinful we are. It is completely a gift of God, this salvation that we have. And we're not saved by works. There's no works that any of us could ever do to save us. That's how deplorably sinful we were before we trusted Christ. And we still walk in that sin. Thank God again for his grace. By grace, we've been saved through faith not of our own works, but it is a gift of God. And then he concludes in verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So in conclusion, even those good works that we do, we can't even say that they're our own good works because God has prepared those beforehand so that we might walk in them. It's all a gift of God. Thank God this morning. Thank him today for his grace, his salvation. Ask God to give you an opportunity that you could plant a seed of the gospel in somebody else's heart so that they too might come to know this grace, experience this salvation that God has bought for them. If you recognize that somebody's had that seed planted in their heart, then ask God to give you the words by the Holy Spirit to, to share with them, to cultivate that seed. And if God, by his grace, would allow us to participate and watch him save somebody today, wouldn't that be a great day? I pray that you spend the rest of the day just meditating on God's grace towards you, um, his favor towards you, his immeasurable mercies towards you, and that you would have a day that's just filled with worship from your heart to the Lord, um, just thanking him for his grace today and his salvation. Ladies, I want to remind you that Catalyst is Friday night, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. here at the church. Mandy Young will be speaking tomorrow night. Incredible testimony uh, that this young lady has, and so you want to be encouraged by that. I look forward to seeing you all this weekend in worship. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Have a great next couple of days until we meet on Sunday morning.